Hey everyone, my name is Adam Bauman. I'm a solutions engineer at Kong, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to get up and running with the Kong Connect Manage Control Plane, all through a single, easy to use interface. What we're going to do is walk through how to set up a runtime instance in your local machine using Docker. We're going to then create a new service, expose that service, secure it, and do some management of it through the Kong Connect Service Hub. Finally, we're going to publish your API to a developer portal so that you can easily share your documentation and allow developers to try out your newly created service. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is set up some runtime instances in our local machine in order to proxy traffic for the services and the routes that we'll be setting up later. To get started, go to the Connect UI and click on the Runtime Manager tab in the left-hand navigation. So you can see here, I've already set up some runtime groups in my organization, but if you're just getting started, you'll have the default one. So let's use that for the rest of the video so you can follow along. On this screen, you'll see the list of runtime instances. We're just getting going, so there shouldn't be any runtime instances in here yet, but let's go ahead and click the new runtime instance button. I'm on a Mac OS system, and so I'll just leave this as Mac, but you can follow along on Windows or Linux, or if you want to start with any of your cloud providers, you can feel free to click one of those. I've got a gateway instance here of the latest version of Kong at this time of this recording, so I'm going to leave that. And I've already installed Docker Desktop, but if you don't have that installed, feel free to pause the video and go do that now. The next step is to generate a script. Uh, we come, we build this pre-configured for you with some base Kong configurations so that you can have your local instance connect to connect to be able to, to manage configurations. I'm going to go here and run this in my terminal. And it will go in, start up the, the Kong Gateway proxy, and connect back to the connect portal. As you can see, there's a new runtime instance that's been connected, and, and it's pending a sync of the configuration. So now we've got a local instance running a Docker that is connected to the control plane in Connect, and we'll be able to create services and routes that will sync down to that local runtime instance. Now that we have a runtime instance running locally on our machine, the next step we have to go through is to create a service so that we can allow traffic to be routed through the Kong Gateway and serve up data. So in order to do that, we're going to go to the Service Hub tab in the left-hand side. And you can see I have some services already set up here because I've been working with my organization, but you may not have anything here. So let's get started by clicking the Service Package button in the upper right-hand corner. I'm just going to give this a generic name. And you can leave the description blank for now. It's not required. Once clicking Save, you'll have the options to create a service version. At Kong, we use semantic versioning, so I'm just going to create this one as 1.0.0, and the runtime group is already set to default. Again, you probably only have the default runtime group, so you can just leave that as is and click Create. Now that we have a version of our new service, we need to actually have it do something. So we're going to create an implementation. Click the New Implementation button, and let's just give this a new service name. And we have an upstream URL of Swagger Pet Store. An upstream URL is really the backend service that you're going to be connecting to that will serve the data. And it would be your application either internally or in this case, we're using an external URL. I'll leave the rest of the settings as default and go on to creating a route. The routing is really important here because this is what's going to actually handle the traffic and figure out what's coming in and which service it needs to connect to. So I'm going to do a simple service that's available in my upstream. I can name this whatever I want. I'm going to leave the protocols HTTP, HTTPS because I'm just doing a RESTful call. And I'm going to set a route of pet store. What this is doing is that any requests that come into our gateway and hit pet store will then be routed to the upstream service. Again, leaving the rest of the fields, the default fields as they are, I'll click create. And now we've actually got an implementation of our service that's exposed. Now that we've created and exposed our service to the outside world, we need to start considering security. One common concern is overuse, whether it's either malicious or accidental, that could severely degrade the performance of your upstream service. So in order to prevent that, we're going to add a rate limiting plugin. From the service version, let's go to Add Plugin button. 
and filter down the selection of plugins that you can get through Kong to rate limiting. There's several options here. Let's just choose the base one. It's the most simple to get set up and running. There's a few options here, but let's stick to most of the defaults, but I'm going to set a limit of 10 calls per minute. It's not really a real world example, but it's something we can use for testing purposes in this video. I'm going to save that plugin and then go over to my design debug and testing tool called insomnia. And you can see, I've got a connection to my local environment here under that pet, <clears throat> pet store service. And I'm going to make a call. The first call should come back 200. Okay. But if I look at the headers, there's actually rate limiting set up on here. And what I'm going to do is keep making calls to this request until I hit my limit. And you can see the gateway prevents it with a 429 response code. This is really powerful because we're doing that at the API gateway layer and not at the backend service. So you're removing the requirement for the developers to implement this kind of logic. And you could do it at a higher level through the Kong rate limiting plug. With our service protected, now it's time to increase the performance. We're going to do this by caching responses from the upstream service on the, in the Kong gateway, eliminating the back and forth between the gateway and the service, as well as reducing load on the upstream service. To do this, we'll use our proxy cache plugin. Same way we added the rate limiting plugin, we'll go to the plugin hub and look up caching. And we'll select the base proxy caching plugin because it's easier to configure. For the most part, we'll keep all of the settings the same, but we are going to specify using the caching strategy of memory. We'll save this. And now we've got caching enabled. To show this in action, we're going to again, go to our insomnia tool to hit the endpoint that we have stored in our local cache. If we hit it send again, we're getting the 200 okay. And it's important to notice the upstream latency here. So this latency is because it's nothing is being cached right now, but on subsequent calls, you can see the upstream latency and the proxy latency drop dramatically down to sub millisecond timing. This really increases the performance of your application by using the proxy cache plugin. Before we expose our service to the external dev portal, we're going to make sure it's secure by using key authentication and consumers to uniquely identify who's accessing the API and control the data that's sent back to them. We'll do this in the same way we added the other plugins. Click add plugin here and search for key authentication. Select that plugin. And we can leave everything by default. Now key authentication is turned on. If we go back to insomnia, try to make that same request. You'll see we get a 401 unauthorized with no API key found in request. The next step is to create a consumer with an API key that's allowed to access this and test to make sure that it's working correctly. I'll go over to the runtime manager and select our default runtime again, go into consumers and create a new consumer. Let's just name this one new consumer and custom ID. We can put this to whatever we want and click save. Now that we have our new consumer, we have to create an API key for them. You can do this by going to the credentials tab, key authentication in this example, because that's the plugin that we enabled. We'll create a new key credential. You can leave this one blank because we want to auto generate this key. Go back to the key authentication and we can copy that key and then use that key over in insomnia to be able to make the request. There's two ways to do this. I can add a header or I can actually go into my authentication and do API key auth. Use the default name of API key, paste the value that I got from my connect portal. And now we're back to having a 200 OK. So now, as you can see, we've added authentication to this endpoint to secure it and only allow specific consumers to be able to call it and get data back from our service. With our service secure, the final step is to publish our service to our externally facing developer portal so that other developers can consume our newly created API. 
In order to do this, you need to have an open API specification file. I've created a simple one to match up with the steps we've taken in this article, and it will include the basic service information, the paths to get to the newly created routes, as well as some API key authentication tags that will allow you to use those API keys in your developer portal. With this created, we can go back to our connect manager, go down to the service hub tab on the left-hand side and select our my new service that we created earlier in the tutorial. We have our version 1.0.0 that is currently unpublished. In the screen, you'll see a lot of information, but what we're gonna do right now is go to the version spec section, which is in the bottom right, and upload that file that we've created. I'm just gonna grab that one here, upload. As you can see, right away you get a brief preview of what it will look like from the specification in the developer portal. Next, we'll need to actually change the status of this version to be published. If you go to the upper right hand side, select the actions drop down and edit version status, you'll see several options. Currently, this one is unpublished, but we'd like to publish it. So let's select that option and click save. Before your new service is available through the dev portal, you'll have to publish the service to the dev portal itself by going to my new service, actions in the top right and clicking publish to portal. Once that's done, you're now published. And if you go over to the dev portal section on the left hand side, you'll see the my new service created with one service version 1.0.0, which is the one we created. If you now go to the link for the connect portal URL, you'll be taken into the developer portal. I'm already logged in here, but you may have to log in or sign up with a new account in order to act as a external developer. But you'll see that my service tab here is, is linked with the latest version of 1.0. And if you click on my new service, you'll see that open API spec that's been created, as well as the ability to authorize with an API key. And now any external developer will be able to use your newly created service and route.